kind that we're not accustomed to going to bed early. So I went to bed about 9.30 or somewhere here. So the next thing I know, I woke up about 1.30. And when I, when I looked, I saw a light outside in the other room. When I went out there, Sister John was out there, so she, she, she went to bed too early. <laughs> So she woke up and couldn't sleep. And after that, no, I couldn't sleep. So we, we, we prefer to be at Crusade, and so we're able to go home 11, then quarter to 11, 11, and just go straight to bed and sleep until next morning, all right? So that means tomorrow evening and Friday evening. <laughs> I didn't realize that, um, I remember I told you once that I thought I could sing and someone convinced me that I couldn't. All right. The long and short of it is that by God's grace, I was able to produce somebody who could see. <laughs> she had nothing to do with that, right? <laughs> but we really have a daughter. We have a daughter that really can sing. She can sing. And, 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 and the story behind that one is that I used to hear her singing in our room. And I said to myself, why should not stop the noise in the house? I don't know how is that. And she will be singing and I, and I, and I will be saying, but she can't. I listen, I'm totally you know, so, so you can understand. And so one day we went down to church and I was told that she was going to sing. And I said to myself, what are you putting up here? What are you putting up here for? She can't sing. And there was this gentleman sitting beside me who plays the all in the church. So, while she's there singing, she was being a soul. And I said, I said, I'm going fool somewhere. So I hear the man to me, no, you're mad. You know how many decibels she went through a while ago, this is what is a decibel. <laughs> <laughs> to be away from the plate, to be safe, to find a place where the plate can't reach me. In the middle of the dark ages, there was a bubonic plague which killed millions of people. And right through time, there have been different types of plagues. I guess chick V and sick V are plagues in their own way, and AIDS are plagues. But the plagues that we're going to talk about tonight are found in Revelation chapter 16 in the main. And the plagues sometimes would have caused some people to not only fear but wonder what kind of God we really are serving. Is he really worth serving since he's going to send plagues? And so tonight, as we look at the seven last plagues, I want to tell you something from the beginning. The seven last plagues are not meant for God's people. Well, well, well. Let's start again. The seven last plagues are not meant for God's people. Amen. God is telling us what is going to happen to people who refuse to serve Him. People who, res who refuse salvation. But God tells us about the plagues not to drive fear in us. But to recognize that He loves us so much that He wants to spare us from the plagues. And so, why are there seven? When the original concept of plagues was seen in scripture, something not quite right to the mind. I don't know. Something is like an echo, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm uh, not hearing so good. But when the children of Israel were about to leave in Egyptian bondage, there were ten plagues in Egypt. The first three were universal in that both Egyptians and Israelites suffered from the first three plagues. But after that, in the land of Goshen, where the children of Israel lived, there were no more plagues after the third plague. So the seven last plagues is as if we are seeing that God's people will not even be affected by them in the real sense of the word. They will affect us positively as we see tonight. As we look at God, we have stopped of righteousness. So as far as I'm concerned, God came, Jesus came to save me yeah. and you. Yeah. Yeah. 
Alright. He is already one of our friend. And we realize that friends do not want bad things to happen to their friends. Tonight, John 3.16 reveals the heart of love which God has for us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life, and that whosoever covers every single person was ever born. Tonight, he told us in Deuteronomy 5, 20 then, Oh, that there were such an heart in them, that they would fear me, finish it now, church, and keep all my commandments always. Why? That it might be well with them and with their children for all of them. So God has something that he wants us to be aware of. He wants us to keep his commandments always and he gives us the power so to do. But Acts chapter 17 verse 31 tells against the backdrop of him admonishing me to keep his commandments live according to his word. He says, the reason I should be careful is he has appointed a day in which he will judge the world. And Matthew builds on this because Matthew says he went a great writ against us with the inhabitants of the, of the land. Why? Because there is no truth, no mercy, no knowledge of God in the land. By swearing and lying and killing and stealing and committing adultery. Do we see these things happening? Yes. Do these things actually tell me that people are breaking God's law? Yes. And God says there's a controversy because we are not keeping his law. They break out and blood touches blood. Lawlessness is pervasive, not only in this community, but communities all around Jamaica, in the Caribbean, and in the rest of the world. Lawlessness. Hosea 4 verse 6. God wants us to be sure what the root of the problem is. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. But in the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. When a generation forgets God, it no longer is amenable to the demands of God's law. And so we can't teach them to our children. We will not be telling them when we lie down, when we rise up, when we are sitting down, when we walk. And by the way, we will not be teaching our children because we ourselves are forgotten God's law. But I'm glad that there's a church that says God's law is to be kept, all ten of them. Amen. And God wants us to continue to lift up a standard so that the world may know that God is intent on saving us. But we ought to live according to his word. The earth, Isaiah 24 verse 5, the earth also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof. Because they have transgressed the laws, changed ordinance, broken their laws, their covenant. So the bone of contention, the bone of the controversy is the law of God. Are you seeing it today? That's why you hear people say, I'll send their talk out every day, la, la, la. As if law can save me. Law can save me, but amazing grace will always be there. Tonight, Proverbs 14, 12. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but then there are the ways of death. As man continues, and so we have a greater responsibility with prayer and fasting to help God, to ask God to help us to reach people who are parking up their ears. We have, bought, we, 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 have, we, have, we have had conversations with people like that tonight. A great wrath will come from God. As we continue, we see all kinds of natural disasters around us. It's the only public holiday that comes once a week. A national son of going to be passed. And when every single person on earth has made a decision, the judgment of the living will have been finished based on all decisions that are signed, sealed, and delivered. When the law has been passed, 
The judgment will finish and Jesus will get up and say, He who is unjust, let him be unjust still. He who is filled, let him be filled still. Stop here. We Adventists teach that the law of God is going to be the final test, but one particular commandment is going to be the test. Just as what happened on the plain of Durham, where there are the people who belong to him. Amen. That's why you're, you're a Christian, you know? That's why I'm a Christian. I want Jesus' character to be imprinted upon and in me. Yes. Then, when all that is going on and Jesus gets up and changes clothes from priest clothes to warrior clothes, the Bible says in Revelation 16, Then I heard a loud voice from the temple saying to the seven angels, Go and pour out the bowls of the wrath of God where? On the earth. Why? Because there are some people down here. And so the first plague falls upon a special set of people. Revelation 16 and verse 2. The Bible says, And the first angel, the first went and poured out this vial upon the earth. And there fell a noise from and grievous sore upon the men which had watched church, the mark of the beast, and upon them which worshipped his image. The thing is, the last, con the last part of the controversy is about worship and who you worship. So the first play is poured up upon those who have the mark of the beast and those who worship his image. First play. So this lady went to bed, quite all right, skin clean and nice, soft and everything. Something you feel like mosquito bites her in the night, so she itching it. And of course, it not it feel like it more itch all of a sudden. Oh, so much mosquito coming there. She turned on the light and look, all kind of boils and sores on her. She takes up the phone. And calls her doctor. And the doctor said, Mrs. Jones, I can't help you. I have them too. Yes. Tonight. But the Bible wants me and you to see the opposite. Psalm 91, verses 5 to 7. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the earth that flies by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasted that moon day. Because a thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand thy rest, but it shall not go by thee. Come on, Eric. God is a very refuge and very present help in trouble. He's my refuge and my strength. Amen. This is the reason I'm serving him. Amen. I must choose the best part to my church. The second play comes. Because war upon war upon war, Revelation 16, 3. And the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea. And it became as the blood of a dead man. And every living soul in the sea died. Caribbean Sea. Black Sea. Which other sea you know? Barren Sea. Barren Strait. You have, you, have, you, have, you have all kinds of sea. All of them, and I don't mean one sea, every single sea, including Pacific Ocean, Atlantic Ocean. Every single ocean, every single sea, Indian Ocean. Are, are, are we getting the picture? Every water body called sea turned blood. The third plague, it is. Everything is getting worse. And the third angel poured out this vial upon the rivers. So some people say, all right, I see the sea turned out and all the fish in there died. So I don't have no food, but I'm able to go catch Janga. Or I can't get the fish that they used to get with that mollocks. Virgin and friends, they believe that they can go to the rivers and the fountains of waters. The angel pours out this vial on the rivers. Mississippi River, Mississippi, Mississippi River. Blood. Mississippi. Mississippi River. Blood. Because it says rivers and fountains of waters and they become blood. If the 
like Black River. Blood. Yalas River. Blood. Don River. Blood. Martha Bay River. Blood. White River. Blood. Great River. Blood. Black River. Every single water body turned blood. What is happening? You tell me that there's a God who loves me and, and everything turned blood. Why is this? Because there's a difference between God's people and the people rejecting. And this is where Uno Vino van. I hear it tonight, I'll get a verse on Uno Vino van. <laughs> And the Bible says, and I heard the angel of the water saying, You are righteous, O Lord, the one who is and who was and is to be, because you have judged these things. Listen to this now. Why is it that these things, these water bodies, have become blood? For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets. What no church? And thou hast given them blood to drink. This is a bloodthirsty generation. You know when I was a little boy and you, there, there was a sh you, 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 you know, like show. Those those days it was sword fight. And, and when the people have sword fight and you see a person touch other person with this with not you don't see anything. You see a person drop. You don't even see any blood. You remember those so nowadays it, 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 it the shows that they have. They have some kind of weapons in them that when they shoot people and plaster them all over the place. It's as if the more gruesome the movies are, that's what the people want to see. And so the sensitivity to, to killing and to bloodshed and to pain is less than and less than and less than. So they want a greater, a greater, a, 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 a greater high. So God say, all right, your blood just the people are going to give you blood to drink. For they are worthy of receiving that which was given them. But my Bible tells me that the saints of God, Isaiah 33 verse 1, bread shall be given him. And the Bible says, his water shall be sure. Amen. Church. Yes. If you are, their consciences were seared, they were sealed in their, in their state of filthiness and unrighteousness and unholiness. They have no conscience, no Holy Spirit there to talk to them anymore because they have grieved the Holy Spirit a long time around the kids in church. So they can't repent because the Bible tells me quite clearly that it is the Spirit of God that draws me to our church repentance. And so the Spirit of God gone. Yeah. All I can do is cause forward. And that's why there are some people, regardless of what's happening to them, the only thing they can do is cause forward because when they bother them move. Some time ago, we had a conversation with a lady, with a and she came out from Canada for the funeral. And she said, she was not a Christian, she said, she has noticed in the hospital the difference between how Christians die and how non-Christians die. She said sometimes the non-Christian is born the most weak. But there's a peace that comes over God's people. I'm saying not a Christian, but you know what they say. So we are saying tonight that when we are in this situation, my God is always going to be there. And this heat wave is going to be something such as we have never experienced. In 1990, between 1992 and 2003, for example, heat waves kill approximately 400 people yearly in America. But what is now? In 2003, there was a heat wave in Europe, and the, the temperature was 110 degrees Fahrenheit. 70,000 people died, even when the air condition was on. Heat. So, the Bible says in Psalm 121, 5 and 6, The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is what church thy sail upon thy right hand. The Bible says the sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. So although the sun hot like what? And there was a band in Jamaica a long time called Third World. They did a song called 96 degrees in the shade. And we believe that's hot, but that's not hot yet. 
that is air conditioned compared to what is going to happen. The fifth play, all kinds of thoughts are going through people's mind. They're wondering. Virgin and friends, one more plague is on its way. Then the fifth angel poured out his ball on the throne of the beast, and his kingdom became full of darkness. Virgin and friends, and they gnawed their tongues because of the paper. Remember now, no water, no food to eat. So there's no food, there's no water, and you and I know that when all the rivers are become stagnant, they start smelling like perfume. The place smells like perfume. The, the, the animals are dying because there is no grass for them to eat. If you believe you have seen devastation, it ain't heard anything yet. When, when Gilbert brought down Jamaica, Virgin and Friends, there was no food. Anybody here remember Gilbert? That is nothing compared to what is going to happen. Virgin and friends, people are going to be so discomforted. Discomforted is a mild word compared to what is going to be happening. The Bible says they blaspheme the God of heaven. Remember, now, all these people don't have sore already. So the sore, the sore break out, infected. So not only the the place is perfume. The people themselves are perfume. And I remember when I was a little boy, I'm a country. They used to talk about a sword that people have called yards. And my grandfather said the only thing that can cure yards is something they have blue stone. Don't care what they put on the something they can't fix. It break out more and more. So they're full of sword. From top, from head to toe. They blaspheme the God of heaven because of their pain and their water. Their sword and did not repent. They cannot repent. They curse God. The sixth plague comes. Then the sixth angel poured out his bowl on the grave where the freight is. And his water was dried up. So that the way of the kings from the east might be prepared. This is an analogy connected to what happened then in Babylonian times. When, when Cyrus and Darius diverted the nation. The Bible talks about the beast who has some people who share the power with him for one hour. And the Bible says because of the problems that come, these people drink, draw their support for the beast. People, water, water is a symbol of people, seas and water, a symbol of a place that is well populated. And so the Bible is saying here that this, the support for the bee system is going to be dried up. And people are going to say that they were just a delusive set of people. Yeah. And so they're going to say, yeah, you know, there's a very spy writer that said, that she looked and she saw like some, some calamity in a place. And when Adventists start to talk and say, we knew what was going to happen, people say, then you know you never tell me. Adventists have the responsibility to tell the people what is to be. It is not psychics and other men and sorcerers that they must go to. They must come to the just say the Lord. They must come to the people of the book. And who are they? Adventists. But if Adventists aren't studying the book, we cannot be the people of the book. The seventh plague comes. And the Bible tells us quite clear in the church. And the seventh angel poured out this vial into the air. Why? Because, you know, the Bible describes the, 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 the devil as the prince of the power of the air. So God wants him to know that if you believe that you are the prince of the power of the air, I am the king of the air. Water, I'm going to pass this thing. And the, and the vial comes into the air. And the Bible says, and there came a great voice out of the temple of, of heaven from the throne of God 
same one church. It is done. All the place, the whole world is in turmoil. They can't find water, can't find food. Can you imagine the state of chaos? And there were voices and thunders and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake. We we have we have this thing on the Richter scale go up to ten. The earthquake that is coming from up to million. Because the Bible tells us, let me see what the Bible said. Such as was not since men were upon the earth, so mighty an earthquake and so great. Why? 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 <laughs> Everything mushed up. When I was a little boy, there was a song, I don't know, I don't know what was saying, Everything crashed. Look, they know. Everything crashed. <laughs> Everything crashed. Buckingham Palace, mush up. King's House, mush up. Stadium, mush up. White House, mush up. Taj Mahal, mush up. Kremlin, mush up. The Georgia Dome, mush up. Every big building that they're about, mush up. That earthquake will shake everything to its foundation. And in a religion that is teaching, that these buildings down here in the home must <laughs> nonsense. Nonsense. and friends, the Bible says the earthquake is so big that every island fled away there goes Jamaica. Bonnie was gone. Trinidad gone. St. Lucia gone. Grenada gone. Antigua gone. You know? There's an island that is that is a continent. What is it? Australia. Australia. <laughs> Everything move. Move out of their places. The Bible says, our oh God is a refuge and strength of our present help in trouble. We need not worry when all these things are happening because angels. Friends and friends, we are special people. Psalm 46 verse 2 says, Therefore will, will not we fear, though the earth be what church removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. What turn it turn it back, please turn it back. The psalmist, thousands of years before the revelation was written, the psalmist had said it. The psalm says, therefore we will not fear, though the earth be removed. The Bible says, every island is moved out of its place. <coughs> Virgin and friends, the psalmist wrote, and he said, come on in. The psalmist said, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, we have this hope burning in our heart, hope in the coming of the Lord. The Bible says, and there fell upon men of great hate. Can you imagine if you go on top of the church and drop a stone which is 58 pounds by the time you stone it, the force on the earth that it, the force that reaches and then when it hit the earth, it as if it were multiple of 58 pounds. Any of us ever used to eat play football and every day? If you ever feel somewhere in a man drive the ball, look at the ball you can. When you look at the origin, if you don't mind child. They used to say, you can't hold fire without water. When man lick water, you can't. He said, you can't hold fire without water. Meaning the force of this community, it is so hot that you can't hold it. Verse 9 says, when a stone, 58 pounds coming from out of space. The force that it hits the ground. I, I don't know any of us ever sit down the water. Anybody in here ever hear about Thunderball? Yes. Not Thunderball movie, Thunderball. Yes. They have Thunderball, <laughs> lightning bolt and Thunderball. My mother told me that when she was a little girl, she said Thunderball. And the Thunderball hit the coconut tree and split it. And it come around and scorn at the ground and smoke a cup. 
No, if I come to my list, not 58 going, I smile, and I'm 58 going, I'm Marshall. Can you imagine the plague with hail 58 pounds one? And when hail is falling, it's not one piece. It's like rain. So, brethren and friends, can you imagine anybody who is alive and not covered under the wings? Something gonna brush them. We just say brush because <laughs> there's no brush, it's polish and brush. Virgin and friends, I know sometimes if people don't like when children give their lives to the Lord, but they're gonna make children who the tiny stone won't drop on and kill them, you know, because parents, some parents never encourage them. Oh, in long time, you see, church, we are to prepare our children to give their hearts to Jesus. Oh, Samuel, when his mother brought him to the temple, four. Oh, was Pastor John when he was about that? Seventy. <laughs> Six, seven. Click a bit. And he should train him properly. He said he wouldn't get a pastor. You have to train your child to want to live for Jesus. And those who are not living for Jesus are going to die without Jesus and go to hell fire. Amen. Which one you prefer? Them turn back. You worry about them turning back and not worry about them in hell fire. Which one worse? So finished. So the story is told of this farm. He had a farm and he left all the morning to go out into the woods to cut. Which is, you know, you know, those days they had axe, they didn't have chainsaw. So he's out there cutting wood and he saw a smoke coming from his, his farm. So he went home. When he went home, the barn was burned to the ground. So he's walking through, looking at the things on the ground, and he kicked, kicked something that looked like black and bumpy, like what? Kick it like some burner. And when he kicked it, that's what he saw. The mother hen, when the fire was coming, the mother hen cut it. And it didn't come out of the way and she covered it. And she burned him, so it's her body. The farmer kicked away and the chickens came out. Jesus wants to cover me and I is wounded. So not a thing will affect me. But I must want him to do it. Church. He says he shall cover thee with his feathers, and on his wing shall thou trust. I must get to the place where I realize that I cannot exist without Jesus. I, I, I don't know if I'm going to get another opportunity to say to the Bruce and, and it might be that when I'm for me to understand that the way I teach my child and the way my parents taught me and I'm, I'm, I can hazard a guess that is the same way you teach your children. Boy, you must learn to stand up on your own two feet. Boy, you must learn to manage. Boy, you must be a man. So we are teaching our children to be self-sufficient. You follow me now? We want them to stand up on their own two feet. We want them to be able to manage. We want them to be able to, to be, to be, to be, to be. So by the time we get old, we get the impression that if we lean on anybody else, we weak and soft. But in the teaching, we must teach our children that we must be strong individuals. We must, be, we must try to be independent, but the church is not independent, it's interdependence. Amen. And when we teach our children that there is somebody whom we are to trust and obey, Amen. I will not seemingly be less of a man because I want to trust in God. Am I making sense, church? Yes. This is something that we need to teach the two things to our children. You must learn to manage 
But you must know that in your managing, it is God that gives you the strength to manage. Come on, church. And when we teach them like that, when the time comes for them to make their decision for Jesus, it will look as if they are less than. Why is it? Why is it that the church has more women than men in here? Because women, women look towards a leader more readily than a man. Because man think him a man and he must lead. Now there are some changes in society, you know, there's no question about that. But the normal thing is for a lady to easily look to God, but the man now give them life to God like that because man believes they are man. And I want you to think it through. I am saying that a woman will more willingly surrender to the Lord than her husband. Because we have been taught, all of us, women and men, but man take it more serious. Man believes that if I submit, it is soft, it's soft. But I must teach my son that he must, he must obey his parents in the Lord. So when the child comes of age, the child will not find it foreign. It happened to me because I was the sort of person who if I set my mind on something, I know I'm going to achieve it. And so I became, I was working at this place and I decided I'm going to manage this thing. And in record time I was managing it. When I became Adventist and I went to church, and all we can hear is, depend on the law. Trust me. <laughs> uh, because I am accustomed to go get it. And I'm not talking about using nefarious means. Go get it because you are go get it. You are cheap. But when you come to church, then you have to sit down. Sit down what? I don't want to sit down because you, you, you naturally want to be in the thick of things. And it took me a long time before I realized that you can't come in a church and want to tell the same that. You have to go in a church and sit down and allow the Lord to call you. That is the difference between being a Christian and thinking a Christian way than the non-Christian who has no inclination to be submissive to God. So tonight, God says, when I submit myself to him, he will cover me with his feathers, and under his wings shall I trust. His truth shall be my shield and my buckle. So the things of the world are important where work and those things are concerned. But when it comes to salvation, it is the truth of God that should be my shield and my buckle. And I must take time to learn the truth. Yes. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. Didn't you see it in Egypt? When the blood covered the post? Yes. And not one Israelite died? Version and friends. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. The only way God can keep me in all my ways is if I have submitted all my ways to him. Yes. And if there's one way I don't give him, he can't keep me. And when we're talking about end time events, end time events do not come upon us overnight. If I'm not learning to submit myself to God daily, when problems in the end time situation come, I never learn to trust God the thing. I'm going to learn that time. So two things, as we said earlier, because God's people were covered under the blood in Egypt, they, Destroying angel, the destructive angel, the, 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 the angel that massacred, killed off all firstborn in Egypt. Just pass over. 
the blood, the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus is the church, is a precious blood. Yes. That blood is that there is a fountain filled with blood. Oh. If I'm a man who has been, and sinners plunge in it, that blood, lose all their guilt this day. It is that blood, it is that blood that is, that is sufficient. And it is this blood that people are rejecting. Tonight, church, when the need is greatest, God is nearest. Sometimes, when you're going through that time, it's going to look as if why all things run like this. But we have to remember that God says He's going to look after me and has to give, God to give me every detail. Yes. So, when all this is going on, and everywhere in Russia, Jesus says, Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am, that they may be all my glory. Which thou hast given me, for thou hast loved me, white church, before the foundation of the world. I want my people for whom I have died to come home now. Because this earth can't contain them anymore. We must set our eyes. You know, I was wondering what I should preach about. I remember I'm on this island, I don't preach about now. And then, when all that is happening, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. Because everything crushed, it is time for the King of Kings and Lord of Lords to put in his appearance. And all those people on CNN and BBC with a big um, telescope on their, uh, on, their, uh, on their different cameras thinking it's just hard dirty thing happening up there. All most of the things mash up anyway, but I'm still wrong. Something to go blah blah blah. What are you talking about? The servant of the Lord said, "Lord, see a lick of black cloth the side of a man's hand." Yes. Right now, friends, I'm looking for that, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Amen. And then the part of us crawling at this road together, church. Praise when Jesus is coming back. The Bible tells me, he's going to say, Awake and sing, ye that dwell in dust. No grave can I hold my body down. When Jesus called me, dry bone and rotten bone are turning and dust come up. We don't have nothing to fear. And that's why we're going to sing, Swing low, sweet chariot. Coming forth the candle. I looked across, John, what did I see? Chariots of angels coming forth to carry me on. This is why we are Christians. Yes. We have something beyond the ordinary inside of us. Yes. And we must recognize that this is the best thing to have because the only thing that the last forever is what? Salvation. Anybody who is alive or who lived and do not or did not get salvation, it would have been better if they were never born. Church, I cannot overemphasize. The plague, the plague is not something to fear. The plague is something for us to recognize that when you see that the world are done. And Jesus is coming back out first. Jesus coming back, look at this little video. Is it church? When you see what it is. Jesus is coming back. He's calling his people. Myriads of angels coming with Jesus. Myriads. Look at that. Myriads of angels coming with Jesus. Amen. Myriad. Myriad of angels. You look at them. It's like, you ever see when Blossom and the water tree? Yes. You ever see the brother number? Myriads of them. They come through Orion, coming down to earth for you and me. But I'm going to change it for me and you. Tonight, this Jesus is coming back. No place will separate us from him. Thousand, thousands, and ten thousand times, ten thousand angels coming for God's people. Can you afford to be absent? Can Can There's not a thing in this world that is more valuable than your salvation. Nothing. 
And so you're in the congregation tonight and you know that you need to make it right with Jesus. The plagues were not meant for you. The plagues were meant for the people who reject salvation. And tonight you have, you have an opportunity to accept salvation. Would you like to raise your hand so we can pray with them for you? That you, one of these days, will become a part of the family of God through baptism. You cannot become a member of the family of God without being baptized, or can you? The only way you can become a member without being baptized, if you choose Jesus made up your mind to be baptized, but was unable to be baptized because of circumstances, you may have died before. Because you made your son, your kind of election sure, Jesus, just like the thief on the cross, he chose Jesus, but he couldn't be baptized because he was nailed to the cross. And the Bible says, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Amen. So if you know that you don't belong to Jesus yet, Jesus, you know, I'm going to play on a word. Jesus owns you, but you don't belong to him. Am I talking foolishness? Jesus owns you. We never gave yourself to him, so you don't belong to him. He owns you. One of these days, because you will not give your heart to him, you're going to chop off the car. I said, leave him alone. I said, Ephraim is joined to his eyes. Leave him alone. The Bible is as clear as the yes. Ephraim is joined to his eyes. Leave him alone. You want God to say something like that? No, can't afford You want to know the angels are coming. I know these angels know exactly where God's people are. Yes. You are God and angel are only the among them. Yes. So if you are dying, you're coming straight to your grave. You come out And if you are alive, you're coming straight. Yes. Personal, personal escort, you know? Yes. Red carpet treatment, you know? Imagine you go live, man. I, I, you know, they want to go escalator. I just thought the escalator is very, 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 very. The escalator, they don't tell me, I don't understand the escalator. They were working in the stand up, I just said, oops, I don't know what I'm going to say. I'm going to escalate the Virgin and friends, not even, not even know why there's dreams. Can't see. And so tonight, that was some moment just before we break. We want it. We want you to make up your mind to follow Jesus. That's why we take four weeks out there with you. And I remember the times when I was the one standing or sitting in the congregation. So I understand what's going through your mind. But there must come a day when I realize that what is being offered is of greater value than what I think I have. And there's no one who doesn't want a better way for him or herself. And so tonight as we sing this song, a wonderful Savior did us my Lord. And you want to make it right with Jesus. I'd like to just stand up from where you are sitting and just walk down to the altar tonight. A wonderful Savior is Jesus my Lord.